Hey guys, Morden and Calculator here, and this season I reached Legend again in Hearthstone playing Hunter, but this time I also tracked my stats. Now, as you can see here, um, I, um, every game um, I tracked um, what opponent I played and if it was a win or loss. Now, this is um, the exit sheet that I prepared here, and I'm gonna talk uh, over it and give you some insight in how this Hunter tech performed and um, what useful calculations you can do um, if you would track those stats yourself. Now first you can see here, um, because this probably looks like, oh, what the fuck is happening here? But I'm gonna um, explain it step by step. Um, first you can see here, I started doing this at rank 12, because before it didn't make much sense. Um, um, but after rank 12, you can see um, how I ranked up, 9, 8, 7, then back to 8. So it was kind of like a roller coaster. Um, I was playing different classes. Uh, winning and here I calculated okay what level do I have for example if I'm ranked 12 and 2 stars I'm 11.6 and the better I am the lower this level gets this is for the graphic then which I'm going to explain after and overall um, you can see um, I had 100 wins and 58 losses so in 158 games um, I went from rank 12 2 stars to legend and what is interesting now is this now first this is a graph that I um, made uh, that shows me okay how did the grind really go and you can see here um, before you are ranked 5 this means before this here I could actually add a line here so you can see it but before this you have the chance to get winning streaks and if you get win big winning streaks for example here there's a very big winning streak or here there's a very big winning streak let's analyze for example the one at 8 um, you can see like I jumped like more than 2 ranks here 2.5 ranks almost 3 ranks so almost I went from rank 8 or rank 9 to rank 5 almost Let's see if we can find this. That was after game number 37. So yeah, um, game 37 is here. So here we have it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wins. And with those eight wins, we went from rank nine with four stars to rank six with one stars, just by having this big win streak. Now after um, rank five, it gets harder. You see, um, the streaks are smaller. But what you can see is I still managed to get a really sick streak here. There was, I think, a 12 or 13 win streak from rank uh, 4 to rank 1 or something. Um, then I went up again because I had some bad games. But in the end, I was able to reach Legend. Then at the end, like, it was a bit um, up, down, up, down, up, down. But ultimately, you reach it. Now, what can we do with this? Now, first, we, have, we can calculate. You can see here that it's actually pretty even. Like, with this... Um, exponential um, showing here you can actually see the line which is called a trend line in Excel and it shows you okay how it would be for example let's let's for example as, assume we are only up to this point so we're only up to this point and then we could actually predict the future with this um, I'm probably gonna make another video where I explain such things but for example let's say you only played 70 games and you the season ends in five days and you want to know okay is it even possible for me to go from rank 4 to legend with my own win ratio that I have with playing this deck against the current meta that's what you could calculate for example I could calculate okay it's gonna take roughly around 80 wins or I could also like go even a step further and add probability and say okay with an 80% or 90% chance it's gonna take between 60 and 100 wins or games um, so that's the first thing you can see, it's actually pretty linear. This means that the skill level between players is not that much different in Hearthstone. This means that um, even at level 8 or rank 8, you can face an opponent um, that you can lose to with, let's say, an almost similar chance to an opponent who is rank 2. Now, how does this uh, function? Because Hearthstone is not just about the skill. Um, I would say, like, actually 80% of the... Um, skill in heart of the game outcome is not affected by skill but by other things for example okay who has a bad opening hand which class um, counters the other class um, who is on a win streak like who is currently really motivated to play who is just playing while he's like watching a stream or distracted with something else because that in my opinion um, decreases the win ratio also a lot um, so it depends on a lot of factors not just the own skill and that means that we are able to get this line that's almost the same you will later see in the win ratio um, graph that it's really like that um, but with this line, this is with my own win ratio. My own win ratio on this deck was 63.3%, starting from rank 12. Um, now, I'm pretty sure some players like Colento, if he plays Handlock or something, he's going to be able to get, let's say, 68% or something. But um, I was able to reach one of the higher legend ranks um, immediately. So um, that's already a pretty decent win ratio. And you can calculate, okay, this is my, my um, equation for calculating how many games I need. For example, this equation tells me exactly, okay, at rank 10, or at ra for starting from rank 12, if I want to get to rank 10, I would need around 11 games. If I would go to rank four, 
from starting from rank 12, I would need around 76 games. And then you can really calculate how many games you need. Now this R squared value here means that this is very, very accurate. Now if this R squared is above 0 0.8, it means that the graph is like this in pretty much any case. Now, what else can you do? For example, one thing I like to do is, as I said, like sometimes I like to grind at the end of the season, but last season, for example, I grinded one account to Legend and then I grinded the other one, but I figured out I didn't, I don't have enough time left. I only have like six hours left and there's no way I can play um, 80 games in six hours. So I figured, okay, I'm just gonna drop it. Now, what you can do here, for example, is um, um, it calculates um, how many games you need for a certain rank. Let's say you are currently here at rank 12 and you know the graph, you know the equation for your own win ratio from last season. Then let's say, okay, how long does it take, let's say, for example, from rank 12 to reach rank, f uh, or let's say rank 8. How long does it take from rank 12 to rank 8? How many games do you need to play? And if you go here um, to data what if analysis, you can use the goal seek, which actually solves the equation. Um, so what rank do we want? We want to go to rank 8 by changing the games needed. And now it's gonna show us how many games we need to get rank 8, which of course should be less than what we need for rank 4. So we need 32 games for rank 8. And now let's say for example I want to go to rank 1. Do I need more games um, to go from rank 12 to rank 1 than to rank 8? Of course, but how many more? With my win ratio against the current meta, with the current deck I'm playing, how many games do I need? Um, and here you can actually calculate, again with the what if analysis, um, this time we go to, let's let's say 1.5, 1.5 by changing the games needed. And to rank 1.5 would take around 145 games. And 145 games, then you can also like know, okay, let's say for example you play Hunter, one game takes average 5 minutes, then you can know, okay, it's gonna take me exactly... Um, 145 times 5 divided by 60. It's going to take me 12 hours to get Legend. Or if you could say, let's, let's say you play Control Warrior and the game takes 12 minutes, then it actually takes you um, 29 hours. And what you can also use, uh, what you can also calculate, for example, is okay, you are good, you have a Control Warrior deck that you can play with 70% win, and you have a Hunter deck that you can play with 60% win, um, but the Hunter deck with 60% win. Um, is gonna have games in five minutes each, and the control warrior deck with 70% win is gonna take 12 minutes per game. And then you can actually calculate, okay, which deck is gonna get me to legend faster. The control warrior deck will win more games, but uh, the games take a lot longer, or if the hunter deck were, the win ratio is not that high as with the control warrior, but the games are faster. And there's a lot of things you can do, and I can really encourage you to make your own access. I mean, if you want a template, just ask me or something, but, um, I just want to show now. The next thing I did calculate is um, I was listing what uh, decks I played against. Now I listed every class. I only made a separation for Sulok and Handlock because those two require a completely different approach. I mean Sulok is turn one Voidwalk or a Flame Imp, face, 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 face. And Handlock is kind of like the one who builds his deck, um, then comes with big AOE clears and then the big giants at the end. So they are really different. But here you can also see what is my um, class, what is my Hunter good against and what is my Hunter bad against or what is the current meta. Now this is a limited sample size, but 100 games is already a pretty decent sample size at the higher end. Because you can see, for example, right now, no one plays Mage, no one plays Paladin, um, and the most popular classes by far are Hunter and Warlock. Now Hunter and Warlock both have around 40 games. Warlock because you have to add together the total games of Sulok and Handlock, which is 41. And then you have also popular, like average popular, like then it's Priest a bit higher than Res, and then on the same level you could see Druid, Warrior, Shaman, Rogue. Um, now, what about the win ratio as Hunter? You can see, as Hunter, um, let me just sort this after win ratio, quickly. So we're gonna sort after win rate from largest to smallest. You can see, I actually have an 80% win ratio against rogues. So with my Hunter, I stomp rogues. I'm pretty strong against shamans. Um, in mirrors, I'm pretty good. This either means that Either I'm more skilled than other hunters, or that my deck is good against other hunter decks, or a combination of both. That could be the case. But if you, like one uh, one thing that tells you that you are good at playing um, is the win ratio of your class against similar decks. For example, if I know I have 70% win against hunter, that's not. I mean, first, my deck isn't designed to counter other hunters, and second, even if it would be like getting 69% win, there's more behind it. That means that actually I'm playing better than the other hunters that are faced. And why this is important is because if you know that and you still don't progress 
if you know that you're playing your deck better than other people are playing the deck, but you, let's say, are stuck at rank 5 for 50 games or something, then this tells you maybe you should change your deck. Because maybe you are a good player and you even win your mirror games, but um, uh, your deck doesn't fit the meta. Like maybe your deck keeps uh, running against mages or something or running against priests, but the win ratio is not that high. And maybe you should just switch to a different deck. Now, it could also be, of course, that. Um, the other decks don't counter you, but you don't know how to play against them. Like maybe, for example, you only win the mirrors because you know exactly what to do against the hunter, but you don't know how to play against the warrior or priest. Um, now, obviously, I was very strong against both uh, warlock uh, variations, 67% like against Sue, 65 against handlock. Paladin doesn't mean much. I mean, the sample size is too small here. Like for Paladin and Mage, we can't really say, like we can't say that Mage is a hard matchup because we only played three games. Maybe we're just unlucky in both games. But for other matches, we can see, for example, warrior is pretty balanced. A lot of people as hunters hate warrior, but I also know that a lot of warriors hate hunters because it's 50-50. Um, and priest, you can see, like, if I, with my overall win ratio of 63%, only have a 50% chance against priest, you can already see that priest is, like, uh, a slight count or a counter to hunter. And just because, like, I'm playing better than the average um, player is able by I'm still able to get 50% against priest. But let's say against equal skill player, the priest should probably win against the hunter more often than hunter beats the priest. And... Again, that's really good. If you if, if if like a lot if more of us players would like track all the statistics and make those exit sheets with all information, we can really like get a good overview over the meta and stuff. And the last thing I wanna um, analyze is the win percent. Now, um, as I showed here, it's um, pretty steady. Like there isn't much improvement. Like that's what a lot of people are saying. If you can go from let's say rank eight to rank five, you can go from rank five to legend as well. Like, unless it takes you, like, hundreds of games to go from 8 to 5, you should be able to go from 5 to Legend as well. But it's just going to take a lot of games. Now, even with my very high, in my opinion, uh, win ratio, it took me, you can see, um, 80 games. 80 games from rank 5 to Legend. Um, I mean, in, in time, it's not that much. I mean, 80 times 5 minutes, or let's say 7 minutes, that's um, less than 10 hours. So if you divide this over a few days, I think a lot more people can get Legend. Um but maybe like the win ratio is the problem. Like maybe people have like 50% win that it's going to take forever, infinite until you get legend or you have 51% and it's also going to take like thousands of games. Like maybe we need to like touch the win ratio and I need to make guides about how to play this hunter with a higher win ratio against different classes. That's actually going to be my next um, Hearthstone related video. I'm going to make a guide on the hunter about how you can beat those classes, how you can um, open against the classes like I even have an exit sheet that shows me exactly what I need to keep him opening hand against certain classes and I think that's gonna help a lot of you guys to reach legend yourself now this graph as I said like shows the win percent over the games now I made a second criteria here win rate that shows me okay up until this game what was my win ratio? for example you can see the first three games I won so up until the third game my win was 100% and then the fourth game was my first loss which means my win ratio dropped to 75% then win again went up to 80% and so on and what you can really see here is like my win ratio stabilized at 64, then it went down to 60 because I had a bad streak. And then at the end it went up again a bit to 64. And what you also can see here is that the win ratio is pretty stable. Like after 30 games already, and 30 games is like rank 9. So after rank 9, my win ratio did not change much. So in Hearthstone, um, you're going to um, end up with your, such, uh, your win ratio pretty quickly. Um, and that's why it's important to have a high win ratio because once you uh, once you reach the win ratio, for example here, mine was 63%. Once you reach that, it's not going to change much. But for example, for many people, like uh, for the average player, this is going to look like this. The same graph, the same situation, but it's going to be at 50%. And what's the problem if you uh, end up at being at 50% win rate? Then you kind of get like stuck at like rank 5 or something because then you don't get bonus tweaks anymore. It's going to be hard to rank up. And yeah, those are just some really basics. Um, I like doing this um, analysis of my own games. I'm going to try to do more next um, season, maybe for another class. We'll see. Um, but um, just to give you the three key things of this. Um, first is you should track your stats because, for example, knowing um, like one valid play or one valid method to gain ranks is to play counter decks. And for example, if you know, for example, okay, my hunter is weak against priest, but really strong against rogue, shaman and warlocks. And then you can see, okay, for example, what is queuing right now? If you face like two priests in a row, um, you might want to switch to a different deck that's maybe good against priests. But if you um, fa keep facing like classes you are strong against, you should just keep playing. Like and it also gives you an idea, for example, okay, you just lost against the rogue, but you know, I have 80% win against the rogue. I'm just going to immediately queue into that guy again because I know most games are going to win against him.
Or for example, if you play Hunter, let's say you face a priest and you can be like, okay, I just lost against priest again. I'm gonna wait like 30 seconds now before I queue up, um, so don't meet him again. Or I'm gonna switch my deck and counter him. Like there's plenty of options. So that's the first thing is tracking your stats so you know your win-loss ratio against certain classes. And this is not the only reason. I mean, other reasons are so you know how you rank up and what your current win percent is and if you should switch decks. Because if you know, okay, I had 50% win now for 200 games, then you know, okay, I'm not gonna... You're not gonna improve like this is gonna take for ages unless you improve your skill of the deck like maybe you should just change the deck and then you have a deck that you can play at a win ratio of 58 percent which would eventually lead you to the legend now so first thing is track stats you don't have to create an exit sheet like i like to do it manually but you can also use um um software like there's hard stats tracker you probably know it better than me but there's some software that tracks the games for you and gives you some uh, statistics Second important thing is that the win ratio and everything it pre stabilizes pretty quickly. So if you play a, a few dozens of games, you already know where you end up with if you kept track of your win ratio. And then it's going to be, for example, if it's, let's say, less than 50%, you might think or might want to think about stopping to play this deck. But if it's really high, you can just continue. And don't feel like everyone gets um, bad beats, as I would say. Everyone gets like a few bad games in a row. Now, I can t show you here um, myself. Like when I was... Um, Rank two with five stars. I had five losses in a row. And that really like puts it down. But then again, I also had big win streaks. I mean, just those five games had really bad openers. And here before as well, off stream, I had four losses in a row. And then here as well, four losses. Like it happens. It happens probably with some decks, like aggro decks more than with others. But it happens and you can't avoid it. So um, what I always recommend is if you lose a few games in a row, just um, take a break, do something else, and then come back when you're fresh. Because often... You lose a few games in a row and then it affects your play. And once it starts affecting your play and you do bad decisions, then you're going to keep losing games that you otherwise wouldn't lose. And that's when it's really bad then. Um, so yeah, those are the two main things. And third uh, thing is you can calculate how many games you need. That's also important. Like if you play different decks, if you know how to play different decks um, and you are under time pressure of reaching legend. Now, a lot of people like start grinding like a few days before because then the season is going to end and you have only a limited time left to get legend. And then I could do like trade of calculations, for example, okay, warrior game average takes 12 minutes, hunted game average takes 5 uh, minutes, uh, warrior has 70% win, hunter has 60% win, and then you can calculate, okay, which deck is going to get me to legend faster. And those are three things that you can simply do. Um, if there is some interest, I can make a video about how I created those graphs and different calculations with some basic Excel functions. But um, that's just what I want to share. I hope you enjoyed the video. It went pretty deep into analysis and calculating and Excel. But I think uh, for those of you who are interested, it was very um, insightful. It might help you with your own grants or your own ideas in gaming. So that was it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll be back. Mm -hmm.